It was called in Mecca. It was gone long to die. And it was called in Mecca. Not that it was a spectacle of the Wolfka. Tracht me red na zee. No, it was a spectacle of the Wolfka. It was a spectacle of the Wolfka. It was a spectacle of the Wolfka. It was a spectacle of das Gol Gol Start Hashem's will, being battle, recognizing that all that exists is Hashem and you were created solely to serve Hashem, that your whole being is a piece of Hashem. While it is true that one can acquire valuable tools from learning Hasidus to change her thoughts, feelings, and behaviors, the essence of Hasidus goes beyond practical ideas and deep concepts. Hasidus is about transforming who you are at your core, altering your existence, and changing your essence. This transformation requires something more tangible than abstract concepts, and that's where the role of the Rebbe comes in. Right in the beginning of Tanya and Parak Bays, the Alter Rebbe explains that all Yidin are one body, and the Rebbe is the head. That's why the Rebbe stands for Reish Bnei Yisrael. By connecting with the head, the Rebbe, the leg, the chassid, can stay alive. And the stronger the connection, the more healthier the leg is. That's a Rebbe's job. There is a story that really emphasizes the power of connecting with the Rebbe. In the time of the Mesutra Magid, a dedicated chassid tried to connect a smart misnagid living in his hometown to the Magid. One day, he visited the misnagid and asked him a tough question. After two weeks of tireless thinking, the misnagid still couldn't solve it. Surprisingly, the chassid effortlessly provided the answer. The misnagid couldn't get over it. After two weeks of hard work and not coming up with an answer, to suddenly hear it like that was incredible. He asked the chassid, where do they teach that? The chassid answered, in Mezrich. Intrigued, the misnagid, this big Talmud Chacham, traveled to Mezrich. The chassid asked to send a letter with the misnagid to the magid. Arriving, the misnagid gave the letter to the magid. 
The Mocking opened it and looked puzzled by the letter and remarked, I don't see it. Perhaps the difficulties of the journey brought about a change. Over time, the Misnagid once opposed to Chassidus, transformed and embraced it. The now devoted Chassid asked the Chassid from his hometown, Tell me, what did you write in that note? The Chassid said, Normally I wouldn't tell you, but since you have become one of us, I can share. I wrote, This person is entirely wounds and welts and open sores. There is no part of him that is whole. Indicating that he was a Misnagid, engrossed in learning Nigla and inflating with, every, with pride at every new tire thought. From this story, we see that although the Gayan had not yet learned Chassidus and he had still not davened with Avaida and did not yet go in the ways of Chassidus at all, just traveling to the Rebbe made a change in him. Previously, he was a Misnagid who was wounds and welts, etc. And then he became cleansed. He was no longer a Misnagid. He was receptive to learning Chassidus. It was his discussions to the Rebbe that turned him into the Metzias of a Chassid. The story underscores that even before delving into the Chassidus, the Misnagid underwent a change merely by traveling to see the Rebbe. This really highlights the impact of Hiskoshis to the Rebbe. So why then do we learn Chassidus? We all know that the Baal Shem Tev once asked Mashiach, Emasai Ka'asimar, when will you come? Mashiach answered, when your wellsprings will spread outward. Chassidus is like a live spring of water, an existence that can go far and wide. The water flows all over, but it is always connected to and defined by its source, the spring. Wherever it can reach, anyone who studies Chassidus is pulled into a connection with Hashem. Why is that? Why is the Torah of Chassidus any different than Nigla? Is it the content of the Chassidus that's taught? When a Rebbe teaches Chassidus, it comes from the very essence of who he is, thereby putting his life into it. So when you learn Chassidus, you aren't just drinking a nice glass of water that came from a fresh spring. Rather, it's like drinking from the spring itself. The Rebbe's life is in the Chassidus, and that's the beauty of a spring. It can go far and wide, but it's always a spring. And that's why the Rebbe constantly said that the best way to connect with him is by learning his Taira. Therefore, Chassidus is not just a set of tools for personal change. It is a means to truly become one with Hashem. The key to this transformation lies in connecting to the Rebbe, who represents the head of all Yidin, enabling us to experience a profound transformation at the core of our being. Sometimes, there are times in life where everything feels like it's falling apart. When things seem overwhelming and your world feels like it's crashing all around you. Sometimes, you don't know where to turn to for help or when it will all be okay. Sometimes, you don't even know what you need to lift you back up. The pain you experience feels so intense. It feels like it's never going to end and no one knows what's going on inside your head. But then, when you know you don't have to do it alone and that there is someone by your side to help, to show you kindness and love, it gives you hope and strength. It shines a small light into your dark world. It breaks through all the pain. What if you could be that someone? Someone's light during their darkest times and maybe change their life and your life forever. What if I told you, you are that person, that each of us has inherited the trait of chesed from Avram Avinu. It's a part of who I am, who you are, and who we are. And when we act with chesed, showing endless kindness and care towards the people around us, we are living in true alignment with who we are. When Avram lived in the land of the Plishtim, and plant, he planted an eshel tree, it's explained that Avram actually built a hotel with amazing service and gave his visitors delicious food, milk, meat, and wine. Avram didn't give the bare minimum of bread and water. He went above and beyond to make sure his guests had anything they not only needed but wanted. From this, we see that planting this tree gave Avram and Yitzchak the strength of Mesiras Nefesh, the ability to go above and beyond. Avram built this tree just because he wanted to spread kindness. He persisted and made sure that everyone felt loved and cared for. His actions transcended logic. Avram lived freely by the Plishtim for years, with no suffering. Their unbounded kindness is what helped him fulfill the rest of the Akedah with joy. It didn't make sense. The same way it didn't make sense for Avram to give in a manner that took away from himself. 
this trait of kindness beyond the level of needs but including the wants was inherited by each of us. We have the power to give selflessly and when we do, we affect our life and the lives around us. We need to exemplify and teach our children to give on this level of Maseras Nefesh. We live in a free land like Avram and should therefore be ready to have Maseras Nefesh for a fellow Yid, my brother or sister. There are times in life when we don't even know that we need some extra love and kindness, but when it's given, our lives are changed for the better. So be that person to change someone else's life. It doesn't have to be logical and make sense. This will not only change someone else's life for the better, but it will make you into a better person as well. Oh, Dr. Needles, I- Yes, Schnooky, what is it? I was in the attic and found this old box of tapes that looks just like the Meadows tapes. The attic, Schnooky? This house doesn't even have an attic. Well, well, what are they? More Meadows tapes? No, Schnooky. Those are special tapes. They are songs about Chabad Hasidus. I got them from an old friend of mine. His name was Menachem Mendel. Why did he give them to you? Well, at the time, I was working on inventing the Marvelous Mitos machine. He told me that maybe I can use the Hasidus tapes to help kids meet their Midas. But Dr. Midos, what's Hasidus? What's Hasidus, Stucky? Hasidus is... Midos alert. Midos alert. Well, Snooky, I'll have to explain it a little later. We have work to do! Now, what do you see on the screen? It looks like a room full of girls davening at school. The computer says they are the girls of Mansi Beis Chaim Mushka in Mansi, New York. Schnooky, turn up the sound! What's that over there? Hey! I keep getting distracted during davening, but I'm doing it all right. How is this happening? My efforts are all worthless. It's plain to see. How can I keep davening? There's something wrong with me. Schnooky, did you hear that? Yes, Dr. Meadows. It seems like the girl is getting distracted during davening. It must be that she is davening without the proper kavana. Let's play her the davening song. Schnooky. Put the tape in and press the send button. Okay, Dr. Meadows. Oh no, Dr. Meadows. I put in the wrong tape by mistake. It's not a song about Davening, it's a song about Hasidus. Oh, what a situation. The wrong tape was put in. Schnooky wants the ground to open up and swallow him. They can't reverse what happened, they can't turn back the clock. Boy, is Dr. Meadows in for quite a shock. Up, up, and away, oh, what a special day. Dr. Meadows has invented something you have never seen. Up, up, and away, oh, what a special day. There's Hasidus in the marvelous Meadows machine. So come real close and listen, this story's just for you. You'll learn about Hasidus, how it applies to you. We're going on another journey like you've never seen. There's Hasidus in the marvelous Mito's machine. Up, up, and away, oh, what a special day. Dr. Mito's has invented something you have never seen. Up, up, and away, oh, what a special day. There's Hasidus in the marvelous Mito's machine. I keep getting distracted during davening I'm doing it alright How can this be happening? My efforts are all worthless It's plain to see How can I keep
keep davening if something's wrong with me. Do you want to know what's wrong with that? Please tell us. Two souls are always fighting inside of us. Let me tell you what the Tanya says. Yes, we want to know. The Yitzhar Hara's goal is to deal with Babalo. of God on high And if you listen to your mind you just may hear my cry All I want is that you serve Hashem with all your heart And with each minute that you do reveal a godly spark I'm your nephesh, I'm a homeless From your top to your bottom Sometimes I make you lazy and slow Schnucky, that Hasidus tape was incredible. Did you see how it helped the girl continue davening the simcha? Yeah, Dr. Widows. Hey, man, you really like the tune. I'm your nephew, I promise. Do, do, do. Yes, Baruch Hashem, it turned out to be just the right thing. But Dr. Meadows... It was incredible! But Dr. Meadows... It was simply marvelous! But Dr. Meadows... Yes, Schnooky, what is it? I still don't understand. What is Hasidus? What Hasidus, Schnooky? I don't really know myself. But I have an idea. One of these tapes must explain what Hasidus is. Ah! Here it is! Like a bird without its wings Or a bell that doesn't ring Like a plane without a pilot Or a heart that does not beat Like soup without a bowl Or a bagel with no hole
by step and brick by brick Building blocks that will just click Veshachanti b'saycham building Did... Did somebody say achos? I love achos Hi everyone, I just wanted to say that achos really, really, really helped me grow in a way that I never thought I would Like, achos is really the, the thing that like made me like So I really encourage it What do we love? My favorite part about Achos is the daily learning. I love the way Achos always gives me a chata to always be working on and looking for and always have it in mind to do the entire day. I was placed in this vast, beautiful world by Hashem. With the task of being a Jewish woman. It has been embedded in me for generations. My mother did it, my grandmother did it, and my great-grandmother did it. But it all started with the first Jewish women and mothers. I learned from Sarah and Rivka the beauty of light filling my home. I am the home builder. I toil for my home to be beautiful both physically and spiritually. Though I only see my Shabbos lift burn for a few hours, in the higher realms they light up my home. For the whole week, the whole year, for all of eternity. I learned from Rachel the role of a mother, the Avaida of a woman, the Akaris Habayas. I am not subjected to learning. Rachel sacrificed her personal spiritual need to be buried near her husband. She chose to be there for her children. With the help of Hashem, I will give up for my children in the future. I learned from Leah and her daughter Dina that even though I am modest as I am the daughter of a king, I have a nature and a yearning to go out to actualize the shlucha I was born to be. The Rebbe tells me I can. While being modest and gentle, I can influence the women around me. Right now, I am just a girl. Through lighting Shabbos Licht, I can start to learn how to add more light to my home. When I have my own home and my own children, I will fulfill my Avaidah. But right now, I have been given the special privilege of being born the Rebbe's Shlucha. I go out every day and spread Yiddishkeit to the women around me. I am proud to be given this task. Rebbe, I will do it. I sit down and I contemplate Alone, full of doubt, almost fear 
I feel like I'm losing I cannot seem to regulate I'm falling low with no hope anywhere When will I see the point of it? I'm roller coasting highs and lows Two opposites that won't ever connect For what was I created If my failures never cease to grow It seems that my attempts to no effect Ay, 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 a voice calls out determined from deep inside Your mission's strong, it's the reason you're alive I came to this low reality, not just to fix the duality, but my soul
basic idea of a nigun that we have in Chesidus comes from the Baal Shem. The Baal Shem Tov says that the pen is the expression of the mind and song is the expression of the heart. Even if the Shem Besim, come to him with song. By Chesidim we say, it was Hashem besimcha? Question mark. How do you serve Hakadosh Baruch Hu with simcha? Boyu lefano birnana. Come to him with a song. The song will help you have the simcha. But then you have in tefillah, when tefillah, which is tefillah, the avodas avodas shibelam, it's a work of the service of the heart. So in tefillah, you have chesidim that used to sing nigunim in tefillah. To express their feeling to Hakadosh Baruch Hu at the time of their davening, in whichever subject matter they they were davening, and it also helped to be able to contemplate to have his bonanus, so that to be able to get into that mood of his bonanus, for that you also have to have nigina. Meaning 73, when at the fifth Akof, the Rebbe called all the Frenchies who came that year to the Rebbe, and the Rebbe launched the Nigen. No, no one heard exactly which Nigen the Rebbe started until someone of the French group started to hear the Marseillaise, French anthem. So he started singing the Marseillaise. Everyone told him to be quiet. It was completely crazy to think the Rebbe sings the Marseillaise. And definitely, the Rebbe sang the Marseillaise, asked to bring the, the French Isidurim, and they started singing with the Aderes Vaimune. The French anthem, all the parts, speaks about the, the revolution. It's, a, it's, a, it's not just an anthem, it's a war song. The words in French. So the Rebbe started singing with the Aderes Vaimune and saying, of that CD, was full of tumor, was full of negative things, and became a place where we could, we could learn Tera, we could do mitzvahs. So that's the real revolution, the revolution of Tera mitzvahs, bringing the real light. But to take that sound and sing with the Adaras Vemun Rechayelami, as the Rebbe says there, then, at this time, to take it and all Tera mitzvahs, the whole Aveda has to be in a way of Adaras Vemun Rechayelami. All the opposite. This Nigan of Adres Vemun is part of our life. This year, particularly, it's the 50th year of Adres Vemun. We made over here in France the whole thing about it. That the old year should be the Adres Vemun that I Rebbe asked 50 years ago. In our Aveda, it means that our kids live with that, uh, as my, my father lived with, to me, with my children. And as Rasta Shem, as the Rebbe says in Tov Shinun Be'ez, Ad Biyas Mashiach.
this incredible touch. The Hachananigan for my map. During the Hachananigan, we saw a kind of transformation coming over the Rebbe. And seeing the Rebbe's face like that. Um, the other Nigan and the Rebbe will be looking around and saying, behind this Nigan, the Rebbe kind of transformed in a different way. There was tremendous Kedusha lit up in the Rebbe's face. The other music, instrumental music, vocal music, um, it's a wealth of uh, different genres, different cultures, but nothing touches your soul as deep as the Nyagunim sang by, uh, by uh, experienced or soul soulful facet. I think it en enriches your life to the point that you cannot imagine life without it. And now I cannot imagine my life without Hasidic Nigunim. When a Nigun was sung in 770 with the Rebbe as the conductor, whether it was during the davening, whether it was at a Fabrengen, it was just like at that moment, your the hearts of everybody there melted, and then the shamas were awakened, and it was just the most incredible moment. You also never ever wanted the nigan to end. You know, it says in the Navi, "Vayhi kenagin hamanagin, vayhi alav ruach Hashem," that when the the the, the menagin would would play music, would sing, or whatever it was, then but he alav ruach Hashem, then the Navi would be able to speak. And that was something we like literally witnessed by the Hachana for the Maimra. And it was such an incredible sight. I remember Rabbi Mjeski once said that when the Rebbe stands up by a nigan, you know, some, which, which didn't happen often. It was like a rare, incredible, phenomenal occurrence. And, he, he, and I remember he said that was the Rebbe's raising the whole world to another level. And it really, really felt like that. And watching all those nigunim by the Rebbe and hearing the nigunim and singing the nigunim there with the Rebbe in 770, that was like watching the trailer for Mashiach. We, we got like a little taste of it. A tayana, we got, you know, as the song goes, the best days at last are in the future, but not in the past. The sages tell us a story about a visitor who was passing by Yerushalayim looking for directions to get to the city. Excuse me, boys, could you please tell me the shortest way to the near city? Of course, the boys answered. There are two ways. The short but long way, and the long but short way. Which one would you prefer? Well, he answered, of course I'll take the short but long way. The boys showed the short and long way, and the visitor went on his way. After walking for a short while, he realized that it would be impossible to reach the city because of all the obstacles in his way. Frustrated, he went back. As he approached Yerushalayim, he found the two boys again. Why did you send me that way? I couldn't enter the city, and now I have to walk back the longer way. Why did you boys trick me? We didn't. We said the truth. In the beginning, the way was short. But once you get there, you realize that it's really much longer because of the road that is bumpy, making it hard to pass. And that's why we told you short and long. But the second way, it might take longer, but it's smooth, and you will end up getting there much faster. Thank you, boys. And now let me go the long and short way, and I'm sure I'll get there this time. Tanya is the short but long way. It's a long process. Some chapters are long and concepts might be hard to grasp, but you'll for sure get there. We may try to go the short, long way, living like a Jew without real feelings, doing mitzvahs without understanding. But we'll realize that this way we're going to keep slipping, making it hard for us to reach our goal. In my project, I made some Tanya concepts along the smooth road to get to the final destination, a Benini. Soul Clash Avenue. Here we see that a person has two neshamas, the nefesh abahamis and the nefesh alikis. Middle man way. There are rishayim, tzaddikim, and beinanim. The beinani has some aspects of the rasha and some of the tzaddik. Hidden embrace road. Everyone has a hava mesuteras, a hidden love for Hashem that is always striving to be close to Him. By doing mitzvahs, we are automatically revealing this love. I made a girl lighting Shabbos candles, and the love is going straight to Hashem. Happy Street. 
Prakim Chavav through Lamed Dalet teach us how to overcome sadness that come during davening or at work. Action Avenue Although feeling is important, the Tani says that actions are the main thing and most important. Wings Place As a Chassid, we need to have both love and fear in order to serve Hashem properly. Connect Real Way When the Bissam Mekdash was destroyed, the special Shekhinah that rested there transferred to the Torah. So every time someone learns Torah or does a mitzvah, the Shekhinah is with him. And finally, the man reached his final destination, the Bainani city. Tachan. Trust. The most predominant answer in our lives that poses by far the most questions. They say sit back. They say let go. They tell you that good thoughts breed good things. Chakut vetzangut. They say your mind dictates your reality. But they don't know. They can't experience a reality where trusting will be okay is hard. Because will it? Can I genuinely rely that Hashem will ensure divine destiny if he's giving me a problematic present? If I trust him, will it really be good? Good for God or good for me?
An infinite God created a finite world. He squeezed himself into the margins of our reality so we can understand him, so we can feel his vast love, so we, and oftentimes unconfident people, can trust him. Hashem built a system, an infrastructure to hold his great light, to condense his greatness in different worlds. Atzilus is barely a world. It's perfect. It's pristine. It's powerful. It's godly. The light there is too perfect, too pristine, too powerful, too godly. So God dimmed the light. A great God humbled himself to look more small for the world of Bria. But he was still too vast for the world of Yitzhira to contain. So he appeared even more little. But the final world couldn't handle it. It was too overwhelming. So diligently, God hid himself in the structure of our natural world. He concealed himself so much that people can come to believe he doesn't even exist. This lowly world is kind of like a dark hole. There's pain, there's tragedy, there's struggle, there's us, trying to trust when things get tough. We are told this well-decorated dark pit is the purpose of existence. We are told the other worlds aren't needed, but we give them their importance because we are needed. Every action we do causes a godly response, a bracha, a reward, a present from Hashem wrapped with love. Hashem communicates with us through the system of the worlds, Atsilas, Bria, Yitzira, and Asiya. The circumstances, brachas, and words that Hashem first enters into Seder Shdalshlis are pure good. It's the only language Hashem speaks. Good is the only experience Hashem knows of and gives. However, as this light begins to trickle down to reach our bubble of reality, it repackages itself to be contained within the framework of the worlds. A too great of a blessing that Hashem wants to shower us with cannot fit in our darker world. It's too heavy. The light gets filtered so we can experience it. So when Hashem pours a small amount of light, of blessings, through the system, there's only a small amount of concealment. Thus, it enters this world as revealed good. It's great in our eyes, not crazy great in the godly eyes. However, when an abundance of light is poured through the system, it hits resistance at every world. It's too intense for the more limited worlds to handle. The only way to let this great light through is by disguising it, by dimming the light so it doesn't blind the confines of the world. So by the time it enters this world, it will appear as negativity, evil, tragedy, hardship, pain, everything we think this world is. But this world is all good. Looks are deceiving. We feel like we're facing grief because the system confuses us since this world can't contain true revealed goodness. But does it have to be this way? Does everything need to appear difficult if God wants to give us greatness? Just as Hashem created the system, He can override the system. But we need to encourage Him. We need to spark desire within Him to break His own rules. Bitachin is revolutionary, not just for us, for God too. Bitachin, trusting that Hashem will grant us revealed good, is a rule breaker. It tells Hashem that we deserve for Him to leave His comfort zone and allow us to tangibly experience the wealth of His brachais. So Hashem will pour this vast good, not through the system, but straight to us. It won't be dressed up in grief. It will come as it is. It will be vulnerable and open. It will enter our lives as revealed, authentic good. Trust is hard when the road is bumpy. Bitachin is hard. We get it. Trust issues are real. But trust makes the good real. Listen to what they say. Sit back. Let go. Let God. Good thoughts breed good things. Chocolate vet sign that. Your mind dictates your reality. Be realistic. Expect miracles. Trust in God. It's gonna be good.